that is how the agile transformation fintech digital strategy personal development came about because i'm in toastmasters i'm working in a fintech and i have i'm a professional scrum master as well which is what agile is about so how do i make that the subject matter that people know me for oh what a big mistake mm -hmm. now that season is long gone in terms of i get the part where you said you know um, you know uh, putting the housing on space with friends mm -hmm. right but you're reaching you know a much larger community mm -hmm. what how are you advertising to those people right yeah. It's funny because someone asked me the same question yesterday mm. because they felt that I could be doing more. Mm. When it comes to YouTube, the way your videos get views mm -hmm. and subscribers is very different from the other channels. Mm. You can boost your video in an ad, mm -hmm. but the truth is most people don't really view ads. They really want to skip it unless you make it one of those compulsory ads. You don't want to bombard people with your information. You really do want the people who are interested to be to there. Find you, right? It's not like the other social media platforms where every subscriber is a subscriber. Mm. If you, someone subscribes to your channel but does not watch your video from beginning to end, mm -hmm. YouTube's algorithm determines that your content is not quality and does not push it out. Mm. YouTube controls a lot of the reach that your video gets right. and it's a factor of whether people are liking the video, whether people are commenting and engaging with your video, mm -hmm. and how long people are watching the video for. Right. So in order for YouTube to determine that what you're putting on your platform is quality, mm -hmm. they, people, they need to see that people are engaging beyond a certain point. They need to see that people are actually commenting and there's engagement in the mm -hmm. comments. And then there's sort of a ratio between the views versus the likes. Mm -hmm. So if you've gotten, let's say, 30 views, I think about 5% should convert into likes mm -hmm. for them to feel that the video is, is worthwhile. Right. If, if that is in place, YouTube will push your video out. When it, and that is really the part that is not within your control as much. Exactly. It's really dependent on how good your content is, mm. how good the editing, mm. the quality is. One thing you should take note of is people will tolerate bad video, but they won't tolerate bad audio. Mm. If people <laughs> feel like your video quality is not that great, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll still endure a video. But when they can't hear, that's, that's, just it's just a no-no. Oh, yeah. So it's better to invest in very good audio. I learned that the hard way because mm. in the beginning I had no mics, nothing. Everything was done from my phone. Mm. And as much as the video quality was all right, if people feel like it's too echoey, your volume levels are too high, it mm. sometimes comes across as mumbled, right. you realize that that particular video has very bad stats. Mm. So you have to invest in a quality mic, make sure that you're taking, you're cognizant of the way the sound is coming across. Mm -hmm. On your own, what you can also do in addition is if you have a large following on other platforms, mm -hmm. the Instagrams, the, the Facebook, the Facebook you, right. pop, you, you advertise there as well mm -hmm. because that's also a community of friends that you mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. And what is going to happen is people who are actually interested will, will make the transition. Mm -hmm. What you should prepare yourself for mm -hmm. is there are two different platforms. Right. People are joining you on Instagram and Facebook because this is not a general statement, but I want to see whether Natsume is getting along <laughs> in life well. Are things happening for him or Indeed. not? People use those platforms to keep an eye on you mm. as opposed to trying to learn from you. Mm. So people may not know you as this brand expert or someone with a legal degree. Mm. So when they see you post material about that, that's not really what they were interested in. They wanted to see you in your BMW, right. you in foreign countries mm. to know that you're getting ahead in life. So it's, you're only going to get that transition of an audience from people who are genuinely interested in content that you're putting out. Right. So you shouldn't get broken hearted if you have 20,000 followers, but you only get about 200 coming onto your YouTube channel mm -hmm. because YouTube mm -hmm. is a very different. If you have a subscriber on YouTube, then the person is genuinely interested in your content. Mm -hmm. And that's that the, the survey that they took shows that nobody subscribes after one video. A person will watch two, three, four of your videos before they subscribe because when they subscribe, it means that they're going to be seeing your videos in their feed. Right. In order for them to feel that your video is, is worthwhile, mm -hmm. they need to see more than one. Indeed. So it's always good to have I would always say that if somebody wants to start a YouTube channel, it's a good idea to shoot about four or five mm -hmm. and then have four or five on your channel up front so the person has enough content to judge whether this is something they want or not. Right. Because you don't want people who are subscribers but are not viewing because it just makes YouTube feel that 
one, they're either bots, they're not actual people. Mm. These are bots that are subscribed. Okay. Or you are doing something called sub for sub. Sub for sub is where people go into these massive platforms like Reddit, Facebook, and they say, I will subscribe to your channel if you subscribe to my channel. Mm. But I'm not interested in your content. In content if you are right. making cooking videos, mm. I'm doing agile and digital, so I'm not interested in cooking. Mm. But I want subscribers, so I'll subscribe just for in subscribers' way. sake. Right. YouTube's algorithm goes against that. It does mm. not encourage that. Mm. So the, the algorithm needs to make sure that the subscribers that you have are actually watching your video and interested in your content mm. and the engagement is there. Mm. So you really have to understand the dynamics of YouTube in order to promote it. Or you can leverage your other media, social media platforms. Facebook has this thing where you can boost a post. Mm -hmm. But it's also limited because no matter how much you boost it, the person has to feel that the content is valuable. Indeed. It's not the default that somebody will watch your video and subscribe mm -hmm. or somebody will actually watch your video from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And so you can leverage all those other platforms, but essentially it depends on how engaging your content is, whether people find value in it, and consistency. Consistency is very key. Mm. If you're going, the type of person is going to post and disappear for a month, people will unsubscribe. Right. And that's the worst thing because you're not consistent enough for people to feel that I know that every weekend Jeremy is going to release a video mm -hmm. and he does one digital video, one agile video, and one personal development. I'm here for the personal development so right. I know that on this day I'm getting, this this. Are getting so right. consistency is also very key. Mm. Mm. It's I am I am happy you're touching on the dynamics of some of the you know social platforms that we have. I mean, mm -hmm. especially YouTube, and I'm I'm learning. I'm really really learning a lot. So I'm really hoping that the audience is also learning. Mm -hmm. You know the different dynamics that apply to the different platforms that we use. Yeah. Really really good stuff. Um, so tell us your which which video have you posted as garnered highest views. Which one would you say has garnered the, high, the, the highest views? I think the highest viewed video right now is a video that is about what is fintech. Right. So fintech explained very mm. simply. I think it's less than 10 minutes. Mm. I think that got the most traction. Okay. And it was followed by another video about public speaking with, virtual, with a virtual reality audience. Okay. Then the third would be working in a bank versus working in a fintech. Mm. I think those three mm. have over a thousand views and they were released just about a month or two ago mm. and I've, I've gone through the videos and tried to understand what was engaging about them and mm. I, I realized that that's the whole part of the edutainment I preface a lot of my videos with a story that is relating to the content so okay. I think the fintech strategy I started with how Blockbuster went out of business mm -hmm. even though they could have been Netflix right they were actually approached by Netflix mm. to purchase them mm -hmm. and eventually essentially laugh them out of the room. Right. Because I'm using a combination of storytelling and imagery, mm -hmm. people seem to want to hear the end of that story. Mm -hmm. And because you set that premise, now when you go into the part of the video that is more of a lecture, mm -hmm. they have something to benchmark it against. Mm -hmm. So they understand that, oh, this is how FinTech came about. Mm -hmm. These are the consequences of not innovating, mm -hmm. not being agile, mm -hmm. not going digital first. These are the this, are the, this is what could happen. We all see that we used to take, rent out DVDs, rent out cassettes, mm -hmm. but it's, not, it's no longer there. Mm. So Blockbuster could have been Netflix if they had been thinking that way and they didn't. Mm -hmm. I decided that mm -hmm. that is going to be my style of delivery. I wanted to use imagery, use storytelling to hook the audience, to let them understand that it's not a lecture, it's relating to a real life incident mm -hmm. and it actually informs you about something that you may not have known. And I think that's the reason why it's gotten as much traction as mm. it has. Quickly, quickly, just briefly as well, tell us about this aspect of storytelling. Mm. You know, touch, touch on it. So for anybody who's looking to, I mean, like I say, start maybe a YouTube page, for example, mm. touch on that aspect of storytelling and how beneficial it is. You know, just simply, briefly. All right. So people underestimate storytelling Brother, not underestimate, but relegate storytelling to fiction. Mm. People think a story is when you start once upon a time. Mm. However, when I ask you to tell me, narrate an incident that happened, you mm. automatically go into storytelling mode. Right. If you had an incident with your girlfriend and I asked you to tell me about it, you automatically go into storytelling mode. There is an aspect of interaction with people where we are constantly telling stories mm -hmm. that we don't recognize. However, when it comes to putting out information, we, ought to, we turn that off 
and we just want to state facts. And we don't recognize that your ability to imbibe storytelling is the best way to engage with somebody. When I wanted to illustrate how bad my public speaking used to be, I went to the story that we had together mm -hmm. of campaigning to an audience for the very first time. Right. If I asked you what happened to your car and it's in the garage right now, you go on this story of telling me how you got a flat, how the shocks are bad. Mm -hmm. We don't recognize that storytelling is an everyday part of our, of our lives. Mm -hmm. In your interaction with your, your spouse, your girlfriend, most of the scenarios that happen that you narrate are in the form of a story. Mm -hmm. For some reason, when it comes to education, we, we tend to take those parts out. Mm -hmm. So you recognize that some of the best teachers that you've had are the ones who are able to use a lot of examples that you can relate to. Mm -hmm. They talk about things that have happened, those teachers who you talk about in Krumer's time, right. they, they narrate these incidents that have happened, rather than just spitting out facts, figures all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those platforms that if you want to keep people engaged, you need to be able to narrate concepts in a way that is relatable. You mm -hmm. need to sound engaging, mm -hmm. and that is where storytelling has a lot of value. Mm -hmm. So in, an, in a world where it's estimated that people have an attention span that is 10 seconds or less, mm -hmm. If you start a story, automatically it creates this suspense where people want to hear the end of it. They want to hear the conclusion. They want to hear the peaks. They want to hear the lows. Mm -hmm. And it keeps them there longer. And once somebody is hooked and goes beyond that 10 to 30 second mark, mm -hmm. now you have a better chance of them actually following your video. Right. So storytelling applies in our everyday interaction as much as it applies to putting out content mm -hmm. in an entertaining way. Right. It's really, really, really useful information, you know, because people, I think people tend to thing that you just need to be, if you like, loud, mm. you know, loud and just, you know, find something to just get the person. You know, I relate it to, you know, when you're going to the markets, let's, let's just say Cantamonto, for example, right? Mm. Um, when you're walking through the markets, people have this way of, you know, holding you or pulling <laughs> you <laughs> for you to notice their, their, their product or whatever it is that you're selling. Exactly. And, and you realize you, you, typically you get annoyed. Exactly. You typically get annoyed. And I see how, you know, in a sense, within, with, with these social platforms, for example, and especially with YouTube, you have to be, there has, you have to be deep. There has to be a lot of thinking behind a lot of the things that you put in place in order to attract or get those people who might be interested in that particular topic you're talking about exactly. to pay attention to you. Yeah. And I see how, you know, storytelling and telling your story in such a way that, you know, somebody will be, somebody listens for the first few seconds and goes, hmm, this sounds interesting. Let me hear more. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see, I see how it, it really, it really works. Where do you see Jeremy Quino as the brand in five years? Hmm. <laughs> five years is a, it's a long way out. Right. I'll be honest and say I have not thought about it that far out. Okay. But I assume that the, the same goals that I have now will apply then. Yeah. So, like I said before, the adjectives that I want to be represented by, yeah. I want people to take me seriously when it comes to my ability to deliver intellectual and engaging content. I want people to understand that this may be what you know about me in my informal or, in, or my, my impersonal or my personal life. But when it comes to my area of expertise, this is, this is what I'm good at. Okay. This is what I bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And as much as I want to put this information out there to give value to people, it gives me a lot of value because the way the internet is, if you put something out there and it's not quality, your facts are not right, you are not, you're misinforming, it's going to haunt you for a very long time. Even if you delete it, somebody has downloaded mm -hmm. it and you'll be, you, they'll keep making reference to it. Mm -hmm. So it keeps me in check and on my toes because I need to make sure that everything I'm putting out there has been properly researched, mm -hmm. my facts are right, mm -hmm. and my delivery is also on point mm -hmm. because it's a learning curve for me as well. Mm -hmm. And I know through the process, I'll become better. Okay. So it was a way to challenge myself to grow and, and improve. And I, I, I think that is what I want to continue doing and a standard I want to maintain for the next five years. Okay. In the next five years, I think it will go without saying that if you want somebody who is, let's say, the subject matter expert or the thought leader in right. a particular space, yeah. I should be the go-to person. Yeah. I want to become that, let's say, the Usain Bolt of 
digital strategy, agile transformation, personal development, so people know that I'm separating myself from the pack. I would hope that I can maintain the consistency for five years straight mm -hmm. because I think the way I think of it is right now I'm not running it in the most efficient way because a lot of this is done by just myself mm -hmm. but eventually I want to evolve to the point where I can separate these functions and have someone do the editing someone do the recording someone do the scripting mm -hmm. such that I do what I do best which is the delivery right. and then the thoughts leadership mm -hmm. I think once I have that system in place it makes it easier to replicate and I could go from releasing a video a week to mm -hmm. probably two or three videos a week and the YouTube algorithm rewards that kind of consistency mm -hmm. and the truth is if somebody wanted your expertise if mm -hmm. somebody said I want to reach out to the EduConnect guys are they good mm -hmm. People should be able to say, just watch this video. Mm. And the deal is made without you even being there. So when they call you, they've already decided you are the guy. Exactly. You don't have to do any convincing. Mm. And I've actually experienced that already. Oh, really? People have reached out to me and say, said, I watched your video. You get what I want. I need you to do this for me. Mm. Okay. I got a very funny request where a church wanted to invest in Bitcoin. And they Ooh. had watched my Bitcoin video and they wanted to invite me over to train their leaders mm. about Bitcoin and what the merits and demerits mm. are. When I first got the call, I thought it was a joke. Mm. <laughs> then the person told me, he's serious. Interesting. Kwame is one thing. I think you remember him Oh, from yes, I do. He reached out to me. And I hadn't heard from him in years. So mm -hmm. I thought about it and I was like, hmm, this is the power of... That particular video had not gotten that many views. Mm. But I realized that it's less about the quantity and more about the quality. Mm. You only need one client to make you a million dollar contract. Indeed. So even if the video gets 50 views, mm. those people who are watching, those 50 people actually are interested in this. Mm -hmm. It's the same as getting 50 people interested in your product mm. and then you get one big sale. Mm. So you really should not get discouraged if your videos are not getting that many views in the beginning because those who are watching are those that you actually want to watch. Mm -hmm. It's not. Facebook or social media where the number of likes actually means people like your picture. They don't mm. really like your Indeed. picture. They just <laughs> like everything on their timeline. Right. Right? But for people to actually watch your video, they mm -hmm. actually must find value. Mm -hmm. and that is where your, 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 your breakthrough comes from. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a number of those factors and I'm hoping that it can be replicated for five, even five years out. Right, right. I mean, what you're saying just reminds me of what um, this really popular marketer says, Seth Golden. I don't know if you've heard of him. So Gordon really likes to focus on, he, he says, focus on the people who have subscribed mm -hmm. to your channel or buy your products. Mm -hmm. Those are the people who are actually interested in your products. Mm -hmm. So do everything to make sure that you take care of those people. Exactly. So even if, even if it's one person or two people or exactly. five people, make sure, you're, make sure you're delivering the best that you can in order to keep them. And, and that actually does make sense. It really, really does. And, and I mean, from what you're saying, it adds to it and makes me realize it doesn't matter if one person subscribes to my channel. I need to make sure that I'm delivering quality to that one particular person. And before you know, it's going to be two, it's going to be three. Exactly. Really interesting, really good um, points you've laid out there. And um, what, I mean, you're wrapping up. Um, what advice would you give to anybody who is skilled in any particular area that's looking to share that information what advice would you give to that person especially in the climate that we are in now i would say we're in the best time for you to package your skills and get an audience for it mm. we're getting to the point where i believe that everyone should be on youtube mm. Everyone who has a skill, everyone who has an area of expertise, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you're working in a company where all you do is accounting, all you do is back office operations. Mm -hmm. There is somebody somewhere who wants to do what you want to do yeah. and would want to learn from you. Yeah. There's going to, we're getting to, we're in an age where people, your audience can be tailored. There's this thing that was said that you only need 1,000 true fans to make a million dollars or something mm. like that. Mm. Because 
if you have 1,000 people who are truly your fans, mm-hmm. that means that whatever you say they will do, yeah, right. they bought into you. Mm-hmm. So if you decide that I'm selling something for just $10, mm-hmm. you have 1,000 people buying that thing for $10. Mm-hmm. Right? You don't need 100,000 subscribers. Mm-hmm. You only need 1,000 true fans. Mm-hmm. If you have 1,000 true fans, that means they will just do it because Kwame said it. Mm-hmm. They, even if I don't need this product, because of Kwame, I'm getting it. Right. Kwame says, I need 1,000 people to buy this thing. Mm-hmm. Until we get 1,000, we are not going to stop right. Right. Mm-hmm. That's all you need. Mm-hmm. So you can start off saying that I am a videographer and I'm just teaching people how to do videography. Mm-hmm. But people will really value your content because they either want to get into videography or your unique style of videography mm-hmm. is more relatable to them. Right. Now you've grown an audience and you want to switch into something else. They will switch with you. Mm-hmm. Right. And that becomes in handy if you want to scale, if you want to sell product. Mm-hmm. There's this formula where if you give out a lot of value for free, mm-hmm. when you decide to charge for it, people are more willing to pay. Indeed. Because they've already established that you're a person of value. Right. So you're not doing anything that is questioned or questionable. Mm-hmm. They feel that you have established yourself to the point where they can trust you. And like mm-hmm. you said, if you take care of the people who, when, when they are few, mm-hmm. when they become many, mm-hmm. you, you basically carry that over. For example, in the beginning, now that I've started, mm-hmm. I respond to every single comment. Mm-hmm. I respond to every single comment. I like every single comment. There is not a comment on my channel that I will ignore. Mm-hmm. Because, like you said, if you take care of them when they are few, mm-hmm. these are the people who are going to build that loyalty and mm-hmm. they are going to be your long-term audience. Mm-hmm. And you can essentially get back from the audience because you've been giving them for so long. So I would tell anyone that just start. Mm-hmm. Put yourself out there. Understand that the first couple of videos are going to be very bad. Mm. In fact, it says the first 50 videos are going to be very bad. The, the reality is that we are, we're intelligent people, so by the time you get to 10 or 20, you would have significantly improved. Mm. If you look at my videos from the first to the 20th, I've, it, even if it's marginal, there's improvement there. Right. At, least, at least I knew how to straighten the camera. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Straighten the camera. Definitely. So I would just tell anyone to just start mm-hmm. and pay attention to your audience, keep them engaged, mm-hmm. and try not to cheat the audience. Give them as much value as you can. Right. Invest in what you're doing and constantly try and iterate and improve mm-hmm. because continuous improvement is the name of the game. Mm-hmm. I, I, I totally buy into that. I 100% agree. Um, I mean, as a brand, Edge Connect as a brand, we are all about learning, 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 and learning some more. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, anybody who has any sort of information, you know, that feels like they need to put it out there, they should. I really believe that they should because there's, there are so many people out there looking for information. People exactly. are looking for information. So if you do have some sort of knowledge or expertise in any particular area, I mean, it's, it makes sense for you to put it out there, you know, help another person. I, th- I think to an extent, I even believe that's what love is, you know, sharing, sharing a part of you that, you know, you know when another person taps into is going to make that person's life better. Exactly. Jeremy, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this conversation we had today. I hope the audience also did as well. Um, I mean, the whole idea is, I mean, the, 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 one of the big things I got was always look to improve yourself. Improve yourself in every area of your life. That weakness that you think cannot be solved, that weakness that you think, you know, you are stuck with, you can always do something about. There's always information out there for you to improve and make yourself better. Until the next episode, improve yourself, continue learning, and see you next episode. Thank you.